What's going on guys? It's uh, Connor. Been a very long time since I posted any videos on YouTube. I'm apologizing in advance. I'm sorry that I've been neglecting YouTube. But this is kind of like an update video of me personally, what's been going on. And uh, also kind of a rant slash do's and don'ts of people that have a concealed carry permit. So, as most people know on my channel, I am pretty huge on guns. Um, when I turned 21 years old, I wanted to get a concealed carry permit. So I asked my father for a Christmas present if uh, I could have a um, Virginia handgun class. Let me buckle my seatbelt full. That way I don't make any noise. There we go. Safety first. So I asked him, yes, can I please have a class um, for my Christmas present? So I got it. Um, I don't think I actually got it uh, Got it done, I think, until by the time I was like 22, because I was, I was super busy. So by the time I was 22, I, I took the class. And in Virginia, in order to get a handgun, uh, a concealed handgun permit, you need to be 21 years of age, and uh, you have to take a, I think it's like eight hours, an eight hour um, class uh, that's uh, sponsored by the NRA or anything that has the uh, government's approval of teaching the concealed handgun class. After I'd done that, I took the test, knocked it right out of the ballpark. Uh, I then went on to um, my, uh, my courthouse and I live in Northern Virginia. I'm not going to say what county, what city, whatever, uh, because this leads up to uh, my story of the do's and don'ts of concealed carry permit. So I, I, I went to my courthouse, I turned it in, and they're like, oh, well, it's going to be about three months. And I'm like, oh, okay. So three months to get my permit. Um, mine literally, I think, came in in about like a month and a half. I was, I was shocked that uh, I, I got my permit that quick to begin with. And after that, I, I immediately started carrying. I carried a full size, plus an additional maybe two inch, 1911 with a compensator. You guys remember that compensator install that I did on my channel? If you're not, go look for it. Uh, it's a drop in compensator. The, I concealed carried that Kimber for a, a couple months before I decided to go more smaller. Uh, People are probably wondering, how the hell did you carry something that, concealed carry something that big? One, I'm a pretty big dude to begin with. Two, uh, I used a shoulder rig. Um, I was actually not okay with that method of, of concealed carrying, uh, because I didn't have, like, these little straps. So, like, on the, on the shoulder rigs, uh, you have, like, these little buckles at the end of where your, um, gun is holstered and on the, uh, another buckle on the side where you keep your magazines. And you can attach like these straps that attach to your pants to keep that from swaying. I didn't have that. So when I was moving, uh, as I was swaying, the weapon in the magazine was swaying. So nobody who was looking could tell that I was concealed carrying. But if someone were to actually look to see if I was carrying a gun, it, it, it could be pretty noticeable. Could be. It wasn't that noticeable, but if someone really, really wanted to look and see if someone was carrying a gun, then yeah, you, you could probably make out uh, the uh, outline of it and see my jacket flaps going sideways like I have extra side rolls or fat or whatever. So then I went smaller and I had a Walther CCP. That gun changed my life. Um, I, I, for me, because I have big hands, big man hands, I needed something where even if the magazine was ejected, I still had full grip on that pistol. And and I have my reasons for doing it. I'm not going to get into it. But for most concealed handgun uh concealed handguns, a lot of them that I found did not have that ability, but the Walther did. And so I got the Walther CCP because it was comfortable in my hand and it was a unique looking pistol. And it was a phenomenal handgun. Phenomenal. It was a 
bitch to take apart. If any of y'all who watch me and have a Walther CCP, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But other than that, it was a phenomenal handgun. I enjoyed carrying it. It was great. I got a new holster for it. I had an inside the waistband holster. It was so comfortable, and the it was it was of course lighter than a 1911. It was smaller than a 1911, so it, it was just really nice. As soon as you get your handgun permit, you you have to go out and experiment. Just just do it. You know, you you really need to experiment in order to get a feel for what you're comfortable with, and of course. You're comfortable in your surroundings, and that's pretty much it. So then, this story coming up is the do's and don'ts of concealed handguns, especially if it pertains to our men and women of law enforcement. So, the men and women of law enforcement, their job is simple. They enforce the law. They applaud civilians who carry handguns, regardless if it's open or concealed. They applaud them even further if you do it the right way. So as I said before, I live in Northern Virginia, and surprise, coming up here real quick, I was going to check out a school to become a bounty hunter. Yes, I have actually become a fugitive recovery agent here in Virginia, or also known as a bail enforcement agent, aka a bounty hunter. So, if you guys want to know how I did it, how to become a bounty hunter here in Virginia, and want to know, leave a comment down below, like the video, the whole nine yards. If you guys want to see what it's like firsthand to be a bounty hunter, if you don't want to become involved with that kind of stuff, if you guys want to just watch what it's like from the safety on your phone or on your computer or however you're watching my videos, if you guys want to see that stuff, it's all real. Everything I do is real. It's not a show like some people make it out to be. I'm not pointing any fingers at anybody. Um, it's uncut, so I'm not going to edit any of the videos. I'm not going to bleed out any of the harsh language. I'm not going to do any of that. Everything that you will see is raw, uncut, unedited. Um, I mean, unless like I put like an intro or something if I get really cool with my computer skills. So... I was traveling on the express uh, to, I was traveling to get to the academy and my GPS was telling me to take the express lanes. For any of you people that live in Virginia, you know what those are. They're toll lanes, pretty much. And in order to get on these express lanes, you need something called an easy pass. It's pretty much like a portable little gadget that you have an account set up for like easy pass or easy lane or whatever other people from out of the other states have. You set it on your windshield, it deducts money from your account. I do not have one. Nor did I realize my GPS deliberately took me onto the express lane when I knew that I didn't have one. So I was driving nonchalantly. My GPS says, turn left onto blah, 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 express lanes. I'm like, are you sure? Are you sure you want me to go this way? It's like, turn left now. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to argue with you. And so I turn left. I'm thinking all is right in the world. And all of a sudden, I see the little white barriers creeping up on my right, and I'm like, well, that's odd. And then finally, I see the big ass scanner things that are right above you to read your uh, ID and deduct the money, letting you know that you're allowed to be there. I immediately pulled over because I'm like, well, fuck. I don't want to be here. I know I don't have an easy pass. Why am I here? I did not want this to happen. So, what happened was there was a cop on the other side of the road, and an accident happened and they just got done cleaning it up. And I'm waving to him. I'm frantically like, I need I need help. And he's like, okay. So then he gets in his car, speeds off. Ten minutes later, he arrives. He pulls up. He gets out of his car. He's like, how you doing, buddy? And I'm like, I'm okay. Um, sir, just so you know, I have a concealed carry permit and I am armed. That's the do. And I was outside of my car. I was sitting, uh, I was on a pretty safe side of the street, or of the road, so I was standing outside my car waiting, I and just waiting to, you know, get all my stuff done, and smoking cigarettes, the whole nine yards. So, he approached me. I did not approach him and let him know that I have a gun and everything like that. So, I let the officer approach me, and I immediately informed him 
that I was carrying a gun and I have a concealed carry permit. And he said, all right, thank you so much for letting me know. Um, I just need a copy of your driver's license and I need your concealed carry permit. And I'm like, okay. So I realized that my wallet is on my right cheek. I typically carry on my four to five o'clock. And I'm like, uh, sir, officer, my, my handgun is in that area. Would you like to take it from me? Um, what would you like me to do? And he's like, no, that's okay. Just go ahead and reach for your wallet slowly. And I'm like, okay, all right. Let the cops, law enforcement officers know that you are carrying. You are legally obligated to let them know that you are carrying a gun. Now note how I said that you are carrying. In most instances, it doesn't matter. Let them know that you have a concealed carry permit regardless if you're armed or not. In this case, I was armed. I didn't make any moves. I didn't do anything that was going to make his level of stress higher than my level of stress was. So, we, I gave him my ID. I gave him my concealed carry permit. All was well. I asked him how to get the hell out, and he unfortunately told me I had to keep going. A few weeks later, I got a letter in the mail saying, yeah, you got to pay this bullshittery. I didn't get a ticket, though. But before I left, he said, hey, well, thank you so much for letting me know that you, you know, had a handgun and everything like that. You didn't move all freaky. You did the right thing. Um, now that I think about it, asking asking the officer if he would like to take it from me was... Ew. I don't want anybody else touching my gun other than me. So, <laughs> that's how I am now. So, now... This is another story of also do's versus don'ts. And also kind of a little rant about my views on certain states' laws on guns. And this also relates to a mission. Um, I call bounty hunts missions because when people, when I tell people, hey, I'm going hunting, they're thinking, oh, he's going to go shoot a squirrel or, oh, he's going to go hunt Bambi, uh, murderer, you know, because of the society we live in now. But, so I call bounty hunts missions. My mission was to go pick up this kid in Mount Airy, Maryland. Here's the difference between Maryland and Virginia when it comes to bounty hunters. In Virginia, you have to have a license to bounty hunt. You can carry guns here in Virginia as a bail enforcement agent. You have to take classes and go get called on the range. Uh, in order to carry certain pieces of equipment, you need to take classes to get called on that. I uh, like to carry less than lethal, non-lethal, and of course lethal. You have to take a class and you have to qualify with them. Sort of. For a baton, I had to, you know, wave it around, pretend like I know what I was doing. I don't carry my baton anymore because I feel like that it's honestly just a waste to lug that thing around. I really don't need a baton. I do carry OC. You need to qualify for OC. I did not get sprayed, sadly. So I just had, like, somebody just wear a glove and just go, Simba right across my forehead, it sucked. And then I had a friend tase me. If I wanna get a taser, I have to go take the class and I have to go ride the lightning again. I had a friend tase me because I wanted to know what it was like because uh, he carries the taser when he's on duty. So I rode the lightning and it sucks, but I feel like the OC spray was a lot worse because it's just constantly there. Anyway, so I went to Mount Airy, Maryland to go pick up this kid, came up dry. Like, okay. Mount Airy, Maryland was three hours away from where I live. So it was a hell of a drive. I was already cranky and tired that I'm all the way up here. And then I got nothing, so I got to drive all the way back. And I'm like, well, great. So before you go on any missions, you have to let local law enforcement area, uh, local law enforcement of that area know that you are going to be there. Because I do not want, and it's, it's, you have to do it. It's, it's, you're legally obligated to let law enforcement know that you are going to be in that area. In some states, you don't have to, but I'm talking about for Virginia. You legally have to let law enforcement know you are going to be in the area that you were investigating. And also, I like that law, just so that way it ensures that if the cops do get called on us when something happens, I don't get shot in the back, and it's a bad day for me, a bad day for law enforcement, and that's a ton of crap ton of paperwork they gotta fill out, and if I survive, that's a crap ton of paperwork I gotta fill out, plus a shit ton of hospital bills. No bueno. So... As I was driving back, I didn't realize it at the time, but I was driving through Montgomery, Maryland. Um, and there was a cop right behind me. And I'm like, hmm, I wonder what they're doing. I, I thought I was still in Mount Airy, Maryland. 
and I wasn't anymore. I thought I was still there, but I wasn't. And so I'm like, oh, I wonder what they want, you know? They, these guys followed me for seven miles. I counted. I don't know why until finally we'll go over why. But they followed me for seven miles. And I'm like, do they want to talk? Like, did I make a wrong turn? I'm obeying the speed limit. I got my lights on in a one-lane road because that's what you have to do in Maryland. Like, what's what's going on? Like, what am I doing wrong? So finally I come across this intersection where it's no longer a one-lane road and lights go up. I immediately pulled over and I'm like, yep, yep, these guys were following me for a long time. I, I don't know what's going on. And I was still in full gear. I was in my uniform. And so I, I stuck my hands out the window because I didn't have any firearms or ammunition at the time. But I still had a baton and OC and they were pretty concerned about the baton. I would be too. Because like I said, it's a uh, it's it's still it's um it's still a lethal weapon, so that's why it's called uh, it's less than lethal, but it's still lethal. And then there's non-lethal, they're less than lethal, and then of course lethal, which is your your handgun um, or patrol rifle, shotgun, whatever you carry. So cop comes up and he's like, "Hey, how you doing?" I'm like, "I'm okay. Just got off work. You know, I I thought I called you guys, letting you know I was going to be in the area." And they're like, "Um, no." I'm like, wait a minute, where the hell am I? I I'm, in, I'm still around that area, aren't I? And they're like, no, you're in Montgomery. And I'm like, oh, okay. So he's like, okay, well, um, do you uh, do you have any weapons in the car, sir? And I'm like, uh, I'm going to be straight up honest with you because I just came off work. The only weapons that I have on me is my baton and my OC spread. Okay, where's your baton? It's on my right hip. He's like, okay, um, well, you're more than welcome to step out of the vehicle if you'd like. I didn't think I was in, trouble, in any trouble at this point because... Instead of, like, saying, get out of the car or step out of the vehicle, he said, you're more than welcome to step out of the vehicle. And I wanted to get a little more comfortable with the officers and, of course, with myself. So I'm like, okay, sure. So I step out of the car, and his, he goes to check my ID and everything like that. And I'm sitting there talking with the other officer. And honestly, I just kind of liked all the attention I was getting because I was still in uniform. <clears throat> Along with a, the, the fellow officer, we were just chatting and bullshitting, and everybody was driving by and looking at us like, what the hell happened, you know? And I'm just like, saw. And so after that, the cop, uh, the officer comes around, and he asked me, okay, sir, do you have any guns in your car? And I said, well, no, sir. Uh, I, I'm not allowed to carry while I'm up here. I, I, I know that for a fact. I, I don't have any weapons, in, I don't have any firearms in my car. The only weapons I have is what's on me and what I told you. Uh, there might be a couple. There might be a couple knives in my in the center console, um, but that's it. He's like, okay. Um, again, do you have any guns or ammunition in your car? And again, I'm like, sir. I know I'm not supposed to have any of that stuff. There might be a round loose on the floor somewhere from when I've gone to the range or shooting at my property down way down south of Virginia, uh, in Virginia. Um, or when I've gone to the range and it's just loose ammo, I, I, I'm telling you right now, you will not find a firearm or ammunition in this vehicle other than there might be some loose on the floor. He's like, okay, maybe search your vehicle. And I'm like, go right ahead. I got no, I got no marijuana. I got no blow. I got no gun. I got no ammo in the car. Go right ahead. Knock yourself out. And he just... And I was actually surprised. He he didn't literally go like balls deep in my truck searching. He just briefly scanned it. And he briefly scanned it to a point where he saw my briefcase. And he's like, sir, what's in your briefcase? And I'm like, these are my case files. You're more than welcome to take a look. And he's like, okay, you can go ahead and open it. Click, click, open, nothing but paperwork. And he's like, okay. You know, click, click, threw it back in the truck. And he gave me my ID back. And he's like, all right, sir, you have a nice day. And I'm like, nope. No ticket, no ticket. Huh, um, okay, that, that's it, that's it. You're free to go, I'm like, okay, bye. So I went home, I told them what ha I told my, my folks and friends what happened at the time. Um, and then I looked up online that, and this is, this is the beginning stage of my rant. I looked up online about how Maryland goes about uh, people that have concealed carry permits, regardless of which state they're from. 
uh, they'll run their plates and they'll stop them to do what is called a, um, illegal transportation of firearms and ammunition. So their way of carrying, of trans, of legally transporting firearms is your firearm has to be unloaded, locked up, and kept away from you, from anybody from getting to it. Your magazines and ammunition have to be unloaded, locked up, and kept away from you. I do not like that. Because what if there's a situation where I need to get to my firearm? My firearm and my ammunition is locked up, depending on what kind of locks I have. That's going to take an additional at least like two minutes per lock, an additional one minute to load up a magazine. Depending on the diehard situation, you know, you might only need one round if you're that good at, at that kind of emergency. But if you want to load up at least five rounds, that's going to take you an additional like couple of seconds. So you're talking it look like maybe like four minutes just to respond to an active shooter or other kinds of emergencies just because you abided by Maryland's law for transporting a firearm. I don't like the fact that their law is infringing upon your constitutional right and also your right to defend yourself and the ones you love. I feel like that if you have a concealed carry permit, I feel like that if you have the right to carry a firearm, if you, regardless if it's open, regardless if it's concealed, that weapon should be ready to go. Safety, no safety, round in the chamber, no round in the chamber. As long as the firearm is loaded, like there is a magazine full inserted into the firearm, the magwell, that gun's ready to go in a couple seconds. I believe that's what it should be like. I do not believe in the fact that you should lock up all your crap and keep it away from you just because Maryland says so. I don't like that. And I don't like the fact especially because they're looking at my license plate and they automatically think just because I have a concealed per carry permit, I'm carrying a gun regardless. I'm a law-abiding citizen. And granted, I knew this ahead of time that that's what their law is like. Most people don't. And if it turns out that they are carrying, if they have a Virginia concealed carry permit and are just driving through to go to Pennsylvania because Pennsylvania has reciprocity with uh, Virginia carry permits um, and they get pulled over by Maryland and they're carrying the gun incorrectly, they're going to get locked up. I believe that's wrong. There's, there's the wrong way of carrying a gun and there's the right way of carrying a gun. I don't think that's the right way of transporting a gun. I believe transporting should be in a place where you can get to it, loaded or unloaded, not locked up and kept away from you, and or carry it, or conceal carry it. As long as you got a conceal carry permit, or if your state allows open carry, then open carry or conceal. Virginia allows open carry, which uh, goes on to my next evolution. Um, because of me being a bail enforcement agent, I don't know why this is. But I'm not allowed to conceal carry, even though I have a valid concealed carry permit. I'm not allowed to conceal carry while I'm on duty. And here's a bonus fact for you, um, unless I already said it. Yeah, in Maryland, you don't need a license to bounty hunt. Here in Virginia, you do. Um, you can't carry guns in Maryland. So that's why I knew that ahead of time, and I didn't have any ammunition or a firearm, for that matter, that day when I was up in Mount Airy. So my next one is open carry. So I have no choice but to open carry while I'm on duty. So I kind of steered away from concealed carry for a little bit because I was doing my job and I got used to it rather quick. At first when I was doing it, um, I felt a little uncomfortable the first day I did it because when you want to conceal carry something, you want to keep it hidden. That's the whole point of a concealment. It's hidden. It's out of sight, out of mind. And with a concealed carry permit, you have that element of surprise if something happens. With open carry, you void that element of surprise. But with open carry, it you can do it as long as you do it safely. Um, it's your constitutional right. And I prefer people will carry open or conceal and educate. I love it when people get educated because when you educate people, you open people's mind doors is what I call it. You know, the light bulb goes off. And... When I open carried, of course, I was a little scared because, and I shouldn't be, but this is my honest feeling. 
When I open carried, I was a little worried because I was worried that people were going to glance at me weird. I thought that someone was going to go as far as to call the police on me. Um, I thought someone was going to go as far and be like, what are you doing with a gun? And I'm like, why are you being a dick and butting into my business? Why don't you go get a code of Virginia? Why don't you read the Declaration of Independence? Why don't you read the Constitution? It's in the Constitution that you can carry a gun. In Virginia, you can open carry or conceal, pick up a book or two, you know? And I thought I was going to get into that. But no, no cops were called. No one gave me any dirty looks. No one came up and was ranting about why I have a gun, call me trash or whatever, trying to degrade me for carrying a gun, suspecting me of a crime. Nothing, nothing like that at all. I was actually really surprised. And so when I got off duty one day, and this is another um, instance of a do uh, slash don't of open carry. I got off duty, I threw off my vest, threw off my handcuffs, threw off my baton, my OC, um, my gloves. I'm like, oh boy, I'm, I'm done with work. Time to go eat, you know? So I went to Chipotle, not like I needed any more Chipotle, but I did. So I was walking, open carry, and this family was coming out of the, out of the restaurant, and I, I held the door open for them, like a gentleman. And when they, when they stepped out, there was three of them. All three of their eyes immediately locked on to the right side of my belt, which is where my gun is located openly. After that, instead of getting, uh, oh my God, like expression, I got a puzzled expression like, hmm, I didn't know that. And I think it was the son who asked, open carry is legal? And I'm like, ooh, Someone who knows gun rights, but someone who doesn't really know all that much about gun rights. Time to open his mind door. And that's why I told him, yeah, open carry in Virginia is legal as long as you carry in appropriate places. Like, as long as you don't carry into uh, uh, private property or installments that clearly state no guns allowed. And that's a, that's another thing. You can, you can carry and conceal carry anywhere um, in Virginia. Uh, as long as, except post offices, because technically those are um, government installations, so no government installations, no schools, um, and any kind of property that says that firearms are not allowed. But it must be posted. It must be posted upon the entrance of that property stating no guns. It must be posted in order for them to invoke that right. Don't do anything that might jeopardize that, look it up or correct me if I'm wrong. But from my understanding, that's what it is. So I told him, yes, it is legal. And I told him the whole process and everything like that, that regards to open carry. And he was, he was stunned. He's like, cool. Thank you for letting me know. Have a good night. I'm like, have a good night. Got my burrito and the story. That's the do. The don't refers to what I just went over with, um, conceal. Don't go reaching for it like an idiot, especially when you're involved with police or pretty much anywhere around people. Don't go yanking it out. Don't go pulling it out. Stupid. Don't, do not draw your weapon unless you need to draw your weapon. Period. Don't do it. Unless you need to draw your weapon. Unless, of course, you know you're going to be unloading it when you're at home. Or if there's a situation where you need to unload the weapon, you can draw from your holster. Or you just do a, a range reload. You just eject the magazine. That's it. But that's, that's how I feel about what it's like for Maryland when it comes to um, transporting firearms and at least having firearms. To me, you know, it's like why bother even having a gun in Maryland to begin with? Because the laws are really restricted there. And in my opinion, you know, you have all those those gun gun laws and everything like that. And it's still not stopping the shootings now, is it? Just saying. It's, it's not working. So that's my opinion. But that concludes my video for that. If you guys want to know how I became a fugitive recovery agent slash uh, bail enforcement agent here in Virginia, leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I will post that video later. If you guys want to see my um, mission bullshittery for bail enforcement, bounty hunting, leave a comment, like, subscribe, let me know, say, motherfucker, you better post that shit. I want to see it. Please get it done. But on the upside, I will catch y'all later.
Peace.